Welcome to Concert Pipeline. I'm Steve Jones. Uh, today on the program, we have The Suffers. Uh, I had a great interview with Cam, uh, the lead singer of The Suffers. Uh, we'll get into that in just a little bit. I'm doing this uh, open from uh, my front yard, actually, uh, at my current home, which in a mere matter of hours, uh, I'm going to be leaving. So uh, it's kind of personal to uh, get to wind out the show and uh, do this uh, actually from my front yard. Um, I've never really done this. I've done interviews through Zoom out on the patio sometimes, you know, a while back, but uh, but getting to tie in all these bottle rock performances to Napa and what, you know, what is special about Napa. These vineyards behind me, which are not mine, um, I rented my house for eight years um, and uh, got to live on this beautiful beautiful property it was it was really amazing um, so uh, I feel super fortunate and get to get to do that my dog's over here he wants to come say hi come here Baz come here uh, he's a, a big husky shepherd um, and uh, he's a he's a good boy so up oh, and I think he's just out of shot so let me let me let me widen that a little bit uh, there we go. Um, all right. So this is Basil, uh, my husky shepherd, who's enjoyed uh, getting to live on this property for uh, for a long while, uh, and um, eight years, most of his life. He's coming up on ten, so his, uh, you know, most of his life has been here. Most of my kids' lives have uh, been here. My son is uh, eight years old himself. He was a baby when he moved in here. Uh, my daughter's. Uh, turning about to turn 12 so a big portion of her life has been here and mine too i've never known a place uh to and been able to call it a uh, home like uh, like this one even though i've been renting this has been my home for the last eight years and i'm moving on to vacaville it's going to be a big big change um i bought my first house though i'm super excited about it and um, also nervous and uh, and giving up a lot, which uh, uh, is a little bit of a bummer. But it's been great to have Bottle Rock here in my backyard uh, for the, I mean, the past years that I've been able to cover it or go as a fan, uh, even not doing interviews. Um, and... Um, and getting to just in, you know enjoy being able to bike to Bottle Rock and uh, and cover the festival, uh, and then come home and it's like uh, I, I biked every day this this time and it's 14 minutes flat each time, uh, which is uh, which is pretty awesome. It's not too far. It's one turn away, uh, and I've I've loved it and it was uh, great to wind it out this way. Um, so this is the second episode of our Bottle Rock uh, series uh, for 2022, and we have so much great content. Uh, we have um, a bunch more interviews coming in the next couple of episodes, uh, as well as performances from a number of different bands. Um, but uh, the Suffers have a new album out, and uh, they uh, were able to play two sets at Bottle Rock. Um, we'll get to talk to Cam about the the new album that uh, that they have out. Uh, and, but uh, uh, also, they played the main stage and they did a jam pad session, which is uh, four songs, short and sweet, but um, really intimate and uh, and cool nonetheless. And so, you know, we're going to play a song from each of their sets that they uh, that they did, so you could kind of compare and contrast uh, between the two performances, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, so. Um, I think we should just get into it here. Uh, we uh, first off, I want to start with the main stage performance that uh, that the Suffers did. They put on a really great show, and uh, and Cam gets into it. She's got a lot of a lot of energy along with her uh, her bandmates. They did uh, uh, so great uh, on that performance, and so we're gonna hear a song off their new album. This is a song called Yada Yada, uh, and then we'll get into the interview right after that. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta listen to me. 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 Y
tin top Shit behind your back and then they call you a friend Look you when you're high and blow you up when you're low And when you crawl back to ask where did you go A little fuck you, a little fuck you A little fuck you, a little fuck you A little fuck you, a little fuck you Thank you for taking the time and uh, yeah. welcome to Bottle Rock. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you didn't just have one amazing set today. You actually rocked too. Thank you very much. Yes, we had a good time. Yeah. So, so tell me about. I mean, you you did a stripped down set. You know, after your your main set, how do you approach when you have multiple sets in the same day? Uh, with the same amount of care, uh, if not more so, when we strip it down, because it's so rare that we do sets like that. Um, you know, every instrument we think about whether or not that's the one that gets stripped down. So today it was the drums. At first we had thought it was gonna be acoustic guitar based. And we were like, no, we want a little bit more power towards the end for the songs that we were doing. But it really just varies from show to show how we uh, approach it, but it's always with the same care. Yeah, and uh, have you played uh, Nap uh, in Napa before? Yes, we've played Napa a few times, and um, I believe this is our second Bottle Rock. Oh, yeah. okay, when was I mean, this isn't a quiz. But oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I know you do so many no, shows. No, uh, I believe the last time was 2016. Okay, okay. So. Um, and, yeah, it was fun then, fun today, and uh, we're, we're just really glad that we've had the opportunity to just uh, be in the mix here with so many amazing musicians. Yeah, what do you remember of the 2016 one? Uh, <sighs> the hang. Yeah. It was just really chill, and uh, I remember... I think Red Hot Chili Peppers were the headliner okay, that year. That, that lines up. So yeah, yeah, that, that, right, and yeah, so that was awesome to watch, and um, I just remember being really proud to be playing in a place so beautiful with yeah. so many artists that I respect, and I feel the same way this weekend. Yeah, are you? I saw Warren G earlier. I'm like, oh, ooh. Yeah. He was on the culinary stage too. Did you? Get oh, I didn't get to see. Oh, oh. my gosh! Oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I missed out. One of the cool things about Bottle Rock is that uh, it has this culinary stage where artists and uh, uh, and top chefs get to make, cook together. What? And, I did not know this. I need uh, to get in the mix more. There's still time. Pink's Pink's doing it tonight, so I'm oh, sure it's going to wow, be Oh wow! I love Pink. Yeah. Amazing. Well, we'll have to see. I have a five o'clock flight in the morning, but I might just oh, stay no. up. Just gotta, gotta stay. You we'll know. see. Just stay up. So blow it off. It's a rock star. Yeah, ride, right? right. It's so funny. Where are you flying to in the morning? Where's, uh, where's back home to Houston. Okay. So is this the end yeah. of the tour? And this is the end of a mini tour. Basically, got a few days break, but it's not really a break. We have an album dropping next Friday called yeah. "It Starts with Love." So, uh, really, just sleep for a day, unpack, wash my clothes, and. Uh, get ready for the next week. Get back after it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so we'll come back to the, the album, but I want to go back. Like, you are uh, you started singing when you were, like, five, yes. right? In class. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and I'll be 35 next week. So 30 <laughs> years of, of singing. And happy yeah. birthday, by the way. So <laughs> Thank you. My birthday Appreciate was two you. days ago. Oh, so, come yeah. on, Jim so, and I. Happy I birthday. Know, right? Yes. So. Yes. Uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, so so tell me, kind of, did, when you were five, is that was that comfortable? Is that kind of where you found your voice a little bit? Um, um, it was definitely where I found the beginning of my voice, for sure. I was singing in church. I was 
all just so obsessed with any movie that had singing in it, whether it was appropriate or not. Mm -hmm. um, lots of What's Love Got to Do With It, The Five Heartbeats. Um, but I really, really was just obsessed with uh, growl and gospel singing, rock and roll singing. Uh, and then high school introduced me to Led Zeppelin and Surge from System of a Down and a lot of these rock singers that I wasn't so familiar with. And then as I got into college and really started digging deeper into like just the origins of black music, um, that's when I really got to uh, explore ska and country oh, and man. reggae and uh, appreciate them as music founded by black people. and. Um, really worked to approach a different way to creating it, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, so there's a lot there I want to dig into, but uh, like, I mean, tell me about who influenced you musically, like when you were, I mean, you uh, you went from singing in church and when you were five to System of a Down, I imagine that wasn't your parents' uh, influence for that. No, right? it's my friends. I mean, friends influence you, right? Yeah. And I had a lot of different friends, so we were listening to Selena, um, in elementary school, you know, when she died, it was really sad for all of us. Um, middle school brought me a lot of rock and new r metal and stuff just because of what was on the radio, a lot of 311, a lot of Sublime. Um, and then high school brought me a lot of hip hop, reggae, punk. I yeah. was obsessed with Rancid, uh. like so obsessed with Rancid. And uh, no doubt, I loved, yes. uh, like that was probably the only like third wave that I really liked. Um, specials, uh, just, and then in the hip hop side, I, was, I just grew up, you know, listening to mainly Texas rap, uh, a lot of UGK, a lot of Paul Wall, uh, and Bun B, who, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky to <laughs> call friends, you know, and, um, but also I was influenced by my friends that I came up with, uh, Fat Tony, Krungbin, you know, it's been an amazing experience to grow up in a city filled with so many talented musicians where we were probably told many, many times we'd never make it living there, you know, that we'd have to live, live somewhere else. But I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but I do believe that you need to leave to really expand your business as an artist. And that's with any place. Yeah, yeah, you got to be able to get out and you know and grow and uh, I mean especially as a as a musician you got to tour you yeah. got to get out of home right absolutely yeah um, you mentioned ska too what was like what ska were you into I mean uh, everything yeah. so I used to write a lot and well initially at some point I thought I wanted to like go more towards like a career in law and I wanted to minor in music but not so much in music history but more in specific <laughs> specific genres that i feel hadn't had their stories told uh with complete expansion yeah. and ska music being one of the one of those you know a lot of people think that bob marley and the whalers were a reggae band you know they were a ska band and that ska music came from Jamaica but it was influenced by American doo-wop in the 50s and 60s so when they first came out they were just making their own version of what they thought that was and it then later transitioned into what we saw in London with bands like the specials but um, from there you got the expansion of uh, dance hall uh, rock steady uh, uh, dub reggae reggaeton uh, I love a lot of Desmond Decker, uh, Alton Ellis, uh, but I also like uh, some some of the more um, like modern folks, like Coffee. Uh, love Damian Marley, mm -hmm. uh, and just a mix of really everything. I love what Raquel Jones of Thievery Corporation, which she's yeah. been putting out recently, just fire, fire stuff. And you know, I'm at a point now where. Uh, when I talk about ska, I often kind of laugh when people think, they, they immediately think uh, real big fish or, right. and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just like, you're whitewashing black music again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, and it's like to erase uh, those bands that really, really established it, it, it makes it, you know, kind of a bummer. But, you know, it's it's the reason why music education and just education as a whole is so important. Yeah. And uh, I love, you know, just talking about music like that. And that type of music, 
actually made me appreciate the gospel even more because when I started to learn other genres of music, punk to me sounds like gospel. Country sounds like gospel. When you're listening to the, that's gospel. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's funny. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And your, your band doesn't really fit into one genre per no. se because, I mean, of everything you're saying right now, right? I mean, it's just, it's a combination of everything you grew up on, really. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. And, you know, that's that's where we're at right now. And I feel very free and uh, very lucky to do what we do. Yeah. Um, so what, what can you tell me about Blue Lights, your first band? Uh, Blue Lights, that's so funny. I haven't been asked about them in a long time, but I love them. I actually just went to my former bandmate's uh, wedding a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's cool. But, um, yeah, we... They were a nine-piece band out in the Clear Lake area. Uh, we went to was this in Lake City, Texas, and um, yeah, we. I was the backup singer. I was not the lead singer, uh, but I learned a lot about recording, about just the beginnings of what a band is and what it how it functions. Um, and at that point in my life. I already knew I was going to be doing this job, but trying to convince eight other people who were like trying to go to college and like get laid, yeah. they're just like, what are you talking about? And I sounded crazy. And it's funny now, but like at the time, I'm sure they were like, girl, what you, you have lost your mind. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's a beautiful thing to still be friends with a couple of the guys in that band. And it was a very developmental time in my career. And I'm grateful for the time that we spent making music together. So what did you take away from that that you've been able to apply to the Suffer song? Um, recording. Uh, functionality of working within a big band. I've always been in big bands, you know. Uh, being in smaller projects are always very different to me. Um, but also uh, learning how to just bring, in, bring a project or a show uh, to completion, which is good old fashioned hard work and uh, punk rock values uh, when it comes to do it yourself uh, activities. And with our stuff, it's been all hands on deck for a long time. And we now, you know, have expanded to a much larger team who we appreciate very, very much. Um, it's just one of those things where it doesn't leave us, you know, how just a couple years ago we were struggling to do this. And we still struggle every day to be here, but it's like a different type of struggle, you know? Yeah. And it's beautiful to have made it this far and to know that we still have uh, space to expand, really. Yeah, so you mentioned the struggle. 2015 comes around and that's where you made that jump where you, you quit your day jobs. Everybody in the band quit their day jobs. Yeah. And, and said, we're doing this, we're going all in. Yeah. Tell me about, like, was there fear behind that? Absolutely. What, what was it like for, uh, for you to make that decision? Uh, fucking terrifying. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was absolutely necessary for this to become a reality. And uh, because we had booked Letterman at the time, it was a lot easier to leave. You know, yeah. we had a reason. But we learned very quickly that one big moment doesn't equate to... Uh, a career you know you have to work for that shit yeah you have to keep uh doing everything it takes to have those moments last until you can have your next big one which is going to be on the way yeah. you know you just have to keep doing that work right and it's a part of our job it's the best job but it's also like what in the fuck is happening <laughs> sometimes you know so yeah and so was it more that the Letterman uh, kind of launched you into this opportunity to do it or that you guys were kind of at that point where you guys were able to say, OK, we're, we're doing it. We're, go we're going out. On this I one. would I would say a little bit of both. But that Letterman was the catalyst yeah. that was all right. We have to go. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. He's on his way out. Yeah, he's on his way. Like this is the last few weeks of the show. We're the last, to my understanding, the last uh, independent band that he brought on. But like, that's a cosign if I've ever heard of that's one, huge. you know. Yeah. And then to go from that to, uh, for a while, a short series of talk shows. You know, we were on 
Daily Show because we funded our first record on Kickstarter. Then we did Kimmel. Then we did a lot of the like hot, you know, the Tiny Desk and uh, KEXP. And it became a thing where for almost a moment, I think we were take, not taking it for granted, but because we weren't completely sure how it all worked, you know, it was a question of what to do with that momentum next. Yeah. And our second album was so different than our first one to where people that weren't into that genre of traditional soul, more R&B, more funk, if they didn't like it, no. it doesn't sound like the first one, you evil bitches. You know, it was just such a... There's always critics and then they, they oh. want you know to, to be exactly it was crazy same, different and, you know. it was crazy but it was like look all i hear from my friends that really listen to music when they talk about the beatles or they talk about the stones or they talk about Led zeppelin is how this one was different or that one was different or earth wind and fire this one isley brothers that one was different this was so different it's like because they were allowed to fucking try yeah prince they're allowed to try. And I'm like, I very much try to remind myself that the opinions of others don't don't matter and that we have to just focus on making the best songs that we possibly can. And uh, it's been a much more fun journey focusing on just telling the truth on the record. And so on this new album, we talk about everything from racism to sexism to the pay gap to payola in the music industry in journalism and everything like i am combating art critics i'm combating people that are dealing with their own inner critic relationships you know interpersonal personal everything yeah. everything and it's been really fun to like not lean so much on one topic not lean so much on one genre of music and just go in knowing we're just gonna make a badass song today yeah yeah and you and you mentioned so racism i mean like something that hit me is so powerful and i wish i wrote down what the the words were but you, i mean like the album stops and there's a spoken part um by bryce the third yes yes and tell tell me about that and you know i mean it's just powerful to do that on an album in, in the first place but tell me about the process of thank you yeah um well, Bryce III is an artist from Detroit who uh, is both a motivational speaker and a uh, rapper. And we had already recorded the song, um, I want to say, maybe a few months prior. And I just, I knew it needed something, but I didn't want it to just be from my voice. Yeah. I'd spent the whole song speaking from my voice and I had this idea to just bring in someone with, a little bit more of a different perspective who still positive still looking at the optimism of the song and what needs to happen um, and asking those questions but taking the extra step and you know offering solutions at least from from his side you know and um, we're so lucky to have had him on and son little on the track uh, I was co-written with uh, my friend John Michael in New Orleans and it was just in response to all the death I was seeing you know I just this was written prior to 2020 prior like I was already going through it you know the death of Philando Castile uh, all man it it was a lot yeah you know and I needed to get it out of me and therapy helped a lot but I think being able to talk about it every time I'm on stage through song uh, has completely shifted my perspective. Yeah. Do you see your music as kind of a form of therapy for you, being able to write and get your express your? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes I share more than I do on other days, but uh, more than anything, it's given me the uh, the opportunity to speak on topics without not being heard. Yeah. You know, I feel very grateful to have this other method of communication and singing what's wrong and talking about it in the lyrics I think releases a lot of shit yeah yeah 
And I mean, and getting yourself out there and yada yada. I mean, for for example, also it's really really powerful. It's upbeat and it's uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun. I, c- I can relate to it. But it's tell me tell me about that song and uh, <laughs> uh, you explain it on stage. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yada yada, Nanya, and I'm not afraid on our upcoming record. We're all written on the same night. Wow. Okay. I had a uh, bad night in Nashville, uh, and needed to do one of my therapy exercises to release the anger that I was holding on to. And so I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I cried and I wrote and I kept writing. And then these melodies started coming to me and I was like, oh, this is fun. Let me like talk shit about these people and tell them what it is on this song. And I was like, no, let me give advice. Let me tell people like it ain't you at all. It's not has nothing to do with you you are combating a system that has nothing to do with you. So get your ass back on stage and let's have a good time. And, you know, it's also was a reminder to myself when I was writing it, just, girl, this is, this is what we do. People can talk shit about me when they casually think of me or see me doing well, but it's not gonna change the fact that I'm still getting paid. It's yeah. not gonna change the fact that this is still my job. And. I was talking to a friend of mine about how I had to really kind of adjust how I spoke to people when I first came out uh, into the industry and started to talk just, you know, like, you didn't I grew up, very much, I or? grew up, no, I grew up in a very, like, it wasn't competitive, but it was like competitive in a fun way. Like, I'm going to burn this stage up for you. Like, all right, we're gonna, I'm going to hype this. So that whoever you're there with, uh, would be ready but i learned it has to be a different approach for this to work we all have to work together or none of this works right and so i spoke my truth and i live in a state of peace because i don't have to you know hold on to this anymore i tell my truth on the stage and then i get to exist in a state of kindness and existence yeah yeah, and so you talk about uh, writing three songs in an evening. Do you find that those ones are like, uh, like that? I don't know. Tell me about the process between like where you you dwell over songs sometimes, but uh, but then you are able to write three songs in one evening. And oh yeah, I mean it was three demos, you know. So I wasn't full on everything, obviously, but uh, it is sometimes driven by emotion. Sometimes it's driven by a, just a burst of energy and thought. Uh, or listening to someone else's art or watching a movie or listening to a friend talk to me, you know? Um, But I've learned that if I'm going through something emotionally, I need to write it down. You need to write it down, that's how I work it out. And when I write it down, sometimes I hear a melody and it starts kicking back in and it's just like, oh, what is this, you know? And I explore that and I've, you know, gotten really good at doing that because I've just had a lot of practice over the last couple years but when I went through the process of these three I sent the band the demos and started working on one with them which I believe was Nanya started working on I'm Not Afraid and um, Yada Yada with my uh, excuse me with I'm Not Afraid with my friend Sugar Doiko and yada yada with my friend Raymond. Cause I had the lyrics, I had acapella melodies for everything, but not the music just yeah. yet. Cause at that time I wasn't playing guitar. Now I'm playing guitar, so the songs are coming even faster. Wow. Which is cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and so the first so- single off the album was Don't Bother Me, and you played that twice today. Yes. As, as well, uh, yes, made that. it into both sets. Uh, t- tell me, was that planned to be the first single for the album the whole time? Or? It, uh, there was never a plan for which one was going to be the first one when we started recording it, um, but I just knew it was going to make it. I was like, it might not be number one or number two, but I know it's going to make the album. Yeah. And uh, I got the initial demo for that one from my friend Johan almost seven years ago. Wow. And so to be able to perform it today and know that that record is coming out next week, 
I'm, you know, just filled with absolute joy and I'm very proud of us as a unit for how far we've come. That's huge. And I mean, and did you run into any challenges with COVID, like in pulling all this Absolutely. together? Absolutely. Like everybody else, right? Absolutely. A, a big chunk of the record was done remotely. Wow. And it took a long fucking time. But it's done. You got it done. <laughs> we you got it Zoom done. thing and everything, sending files back oh, and we forth. We're like sending files back and forth, uh, multiple tests every couple of weeks, you know, person by person by person, remote recording for the people that just couldn't do it at all. And, you know, going through every pain and discovery and frustration that went with that. And I'm glad we did it. Yeah, makes you appreciate it that much more, I imagine. Absolutely. You know, you didn't have the, the easy freedom, not that it's easy, ever easy to make an album, but it's. No. This, it was a test. To, <laughs> to Absolutely. Through, through this method. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about uh, Brittany Brown also because. Okay. Um, actually, I went through the Dare to Lead uh, training at work. Oh wow! Uh, amazing. Yeah, and uh, um, and so your song was uh, first used on her podcast, but then you were able to be on her podcast as well. Yes, I was just on her podcast. She's incredible. Uh, we haven't met in real life yet. We've only done our Zoom meeting so yeah. far, which has been so funny. Um, but yeah, she picked our song uh, a couple, almost two years, three years ago now. Um, and I discovered her work through that initial contact. And, you know, my mind was blown. I was like, wow, this is absolutely incredible. And from there, um, you know, our team's connected. And she ended up having me on recently as a guest. Uh, on Dare to Lead and we had a fantastic conversation and you know I'm very 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 grateful to her for just all the work she does yeah and so uh, I mean what did you I didn't get a chance to listen to it yet but I mean what did, what did you guys talk about uh, we talk about what it's like being a leader yeah. and uh, creative and radical leadership and uh, how necessary it is when you're doing a creative path yeah yeah. Um, can you tell me about Gulf Coast Roast Coffee? Like, how did you decide to, do, to make a coffee? Oh, man, that's all my trombone player, Razo, uh, his concept, and uh, our trumpet player, John. Uh, they're both baristas and have a vast love for coffee. And I love coffee, but I'm a coffee drinker, not a coffee maker. Yeah. Uh, but we did just drop uh, Gulf Coast Roast, and it is our first ever coffee. And it is available now on our website and has all the notes. And it's I, I'm very proud of them for bringing that together. And just I, I feel just like, you know, in, in the mix, you know. <laughs> And you sell it on tour too, right? Like we sell it on tour, so if they come to one of our shows at the venues, they will have access to the coffee, and yeah, it's great. Yeah. You played Oakland last night. How was that show? Amazing. Oakland was awesome, and I can't wait to go back. Yeah, yeah. What? So um, over the years you've played here, what's what's one of the memorable shows that you've had in the Bay Area? Uh, Wow. I mean, we've had some really incredible moments, but probably one of my favorite shows we've ever played in the Bay was at SF Jazz, at the Jazz Festival they have there. And uh, actually the last uh, event we played was, like that was out of town before COVID, was at SF Jazz for uh, their fundraiser that they were having. And they were honoring Bonnie, uh, not Bonnie Raitt, excuse me. Yeah, Bonnie Raitt and uh, Mavis Staples and some more people, and it was just really amazing to just be in the building and be performing. I was like, what is happening? This is incredible, so, yeah. So you probably found out about COVID right around there, and then you had to make it home somehow, and? Uh, it happened, like, maybe about a month after that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, well, that's cool. I, w I wanted to ask you about one other thing, and that's Jam in the Van. Because, oh, yeah. Because that's a unique experience, too. I've oh, yeah, we've done, uh, we've done three Jam in the Vans, and, uh, they've all been super just fun to be a part of, and I think every band should do that session when given the opportunity. Uh, you just really get to approach your setup in a way that is, you know, like it would never make sense anywhere else, you know. So, I don't know. We love it, and our latest one just dropped, and I'm so happy. I hope people watch it. For a band of your size, it just I'm sure it gets pretty crowded in there. I've, I've been in one of the Jam in the Vans. It's, oh, yeah, it's uh, nuts. You get creative with space, but uh, it's oh yeah, cool. it's it's crazy, but we have we have a good time. Yeah. Well, Cam, thank you for taking the thank time. Thank you. And, and thank you. Congratulations on the new album. It's really great, and 
Thank uh, you so much. It comes out on Friday. It is. It starts with love. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, I can't wait to see where you go from here. Thank so. you. I appreciate you so much. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of Otterau. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we're going to play another song from the Sufferers set uh, at Bottle Rock. This is one f- from the more intimate stage, from the jams, uh, jam pad stage, which is a uh, catty corner across from um, from the main stage, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, they uh, played a, an, an intimate br- stripped down set, and I really love what Cam said uh, to the uh, the person who introduced her uh, about playing, you know, smaller stage versus playing a bigger stage. She said that uh, it's stages like this that got us to stages like that where they played the uh, the big main stage so um, very very well said and uh, and super cool uh, we're gonna play another song off of uh, their new album from their from that performance and uh, this is a song called don't bother me here it is How you doing? Bother Me by the Sufferers uh, here in Concert Pipeline. And thanks to Cam for taking the time to do the interview as well. Uh, so what we like to do on these Bottle Rock episodes is 
um, is winded out with a perf uh, performance from a main stage act, a, a headline act that um, that is you know a super unique opportunity to get to see a headline act in uh, uh, in the flesh. And so um, we g w this performance is going to be uh, from the Black Crows. Uh, they reunited. Uh, Chris and Rich Robinson were able to put aside their differences, reunite, and uh, and play some music in uh, Napa f uh, for the Bottle Rock Festival. Uh, some other brothers, like Oasis, can't really do that, but uh, um, maybe one day they will. Not likely, right? Uh, so uh, Chris and Rich Robinson and the rest of the band got together. They played an awesome rockin' set uh, before 21 Pilots took the stage. And uh, this would have probably be one of my favorite of their uh, songs. Um, the last time I saw the uh, Robinson Brothers was in 2006 when they opened for Tom Petty. And it was a, a really cool performance then. Um, and uh, same thing can be said for uh, their bottle rock performance as well. Uh, sh this is a song called She Calls the Angels. And so again, n uh, next time on uh, Concert Pipeline, we have some interviews and, uh, and more great content. Make sure to tune into each of the episodes. For all of us here at Concert Pipeline, I'm Steve Jones. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>
Yeah.